Um, great team win. Really great way to bounce back. Um, we we were we. We did not play well on Saturday at Southern Miss. And if we'd have re-tipped that game, we probably would have won by 30. And that was the hurtful thing about what happened on Saturday is that we we lost a game of a team that we're a lot better than. And that was disappointing. Um, no, dis no disrespect towards them. Um, I hope it don't come off that way because they played hard and won the game. But we're a better basketball team than what we played on Saturday. And we didn't make a lot of shots. but. A lot of respect for our team to, you know, we could have went a lot of ways after that one. Um, I was real hard on them. I was, I was very, very upset with them after that game. And, um, but we came back in yesterday and we practiced really well. We came out here this morning and had a great shoot around. We didn't do anything on New Orleans yesterday. Maybe I need to stop doing things on other teams. We worried about ourselves. We had to get ourselves better. And we got better as a team yesterday for about two hours. We came back today, this morning, and went for about an hour and a half and got better on some things and came out here today and executed and, and, and made extra passes, played as a team. We're starting to come together as a team. I'm just real, real proud of how our effort was and how well we played and, and um, our, our composure. And um, this team is growing. And I, I use this comparison on the radio. I'm a big college basketball fan, and I think this Simmons guy at LSU is the best player in the country. I think he's really, really good. And I'm watching LSU men struggle with him a little bit right now early, and it's because they're young. And I'm looking at their roster and looking at our roster. I'm like, man, they're, they're, we're starting about the same situation here with youth, and they're struggling in the men's game with that same type of youth that we're struggling with a little bit at times. And losing games, they probably would win a week later. But that's part of youth, and we got to stay in there, and we got to stay the course. I tweeted after the game, where there's no quit in this basketball team. Um, young players grow in wins, and they grow in losses, and we grew in a loss on Saturday. And um, we got better today, and we had a big win, and, um, and, and a lot of people played and just could not be happier with how well we played right here. And, and, and I'm, I'm a little bit exhausted. I'm going to go home and sleep well tonight because I haven't slept in two days just because I, I believe so much in this team and I believe so much in this program and what we're doing. And I know people will say, oh, if they're going to beat you, they better beat you now because you guys are going to be good in the next two years. Yeah, we are. We don't lose anybody. And we got three bad babies coming in here next year. And so we're going to be really, really good next year. We know that. They know that. But we want to be good this year. We want to be a factor this year. And that's what we're working towards every single day. And we made a big step towards that the last couple of days. And I'm real proud. I'm real proud of this girl here beside me. She's had some struggles. And she's had some, some good times and bad times. And, um, you know, she's, I get on her sometimes to tell her she's offensive sensitive. When she misses a shot, she, lets, she thinks about it too much. She missed her first one today, and she made her second one. That told me she wasn't thinking. That means she's growing up. More than anything, obviously she made a lot of threes, and I'm real proud about that. And it was an unbelievable shooting performance. And she tied uh, Marshall's record in the Tad Pad. Um, She'll set the new record in the before it's all said and done in the pavilion. Ten threes in a game is is going to be that's something that you'll see um, a couple times as, as as long as people continue to lose her. You'll see that a year, and I see her doing it again. Maybe sometime this year, if not next year, for sure again a couple times. She's just going to get better and better and better. But the thing that I was really proud of her is she started denying passing lanes. She had four steals, four steals. Not been on her about her defense. She had three assists. That's huge. That's making an extra pass. And so I'm just real proud of her. She got her first start, and that was something she earned. She earned that. And I was real proud of her for her effort today. I would say that I, I guess mentally I'm just trying to be ready all the time. And I guess, you know, I missed that first shot, and I try to make sure that I go back to like what I have been working on and that's shooting and making sure that I am ready when coach puts me in or he starts me like especially this game I was like I got to be ready um and so I was just kind of like don't be nervous just calm down like that I guess maybe that first one was kind of like nerves a little bit and I was like okay I'm gonna shoot it and then they get it right back to me and I know like my team they're really good about like giving a second chance and making sure that you feel lifted up and giving you that chance to score again. And that's really what Coach talks about. You know, He's like, if you don't get that first shot, you can swing it and they'll get it right back to you. So I was just, I guess, being patient. And then, like you said, it kind of, the, I guess the room got a little bit bigger for me, so. Now obviously, 22 attempts when you have the green light, I'm guessing. Yes. No one will ever put the red light on you. But 10 games in, 
I'm not that ignorant. <laughs> Ten games in, I mean, how do you feel your game is, you know, freshman? You know? Um, I think I need to develop a lot, um, especially defensively. Um, I'm kind of slow, and sometimes I think – I know Coach may, wants me to be – like he wants me to work hard and um, get to where I am. I'm just trying to be work, working hard at defense a lot. And I guess like the last couple games I haven't made a lot of threes, and I think – Today, I was more like, okay, well, why don't I bring both together, like offense and defense, and try to just mesh it together and see what happens, instead of just maybe focusing on one or the other. Coach, just obviously, she was getting looks and getting open, and you said you didn't really look too much at the one was yesterday. Did y'all just kind of figure it out as the game went on, or how did y'all, you know, you know we, offensively? We looked at some things this morning. Um, I watched some tape, and we didn't, we didn't watch anything really as a team until today. And um, because, you know, it's about it's about January 3rd. And if we lost to New Orleans because of it, then um, that's so be it, as long as we got better as a basketball team to get ready for SEC play. And um, I was nervous about it because I'm one of these coaches that prepared for everything. But they got in some zone. I knew they was going to play some zone. But we executed. I told them, don't worry about what they're in. Execute what we call. And we did that. And um, we executed defensively and, and just real proud of them. Um, your dad wasn't here today. He, he can't come Wednesday either. Um, so you need to let him know or i got to call him one or the other to tell him he don't can't come on Wednesday because if you're going to make 10 threes, he needs to stay at work listening online. Um, but um, now, what a great um, um, young woman, woman Tori is. I've known Tori for a long time. She played summer basketball for my brother. And, um, you know, I've watched her play over the years and watched her have games like this before. And I just kept wondering when she's going to have one for me. And um, she did today, and I'm just real proud of her for that. And um, not only um, – but a great family. I say that about all of our players. We have, we have a lot of really good young women and some great families. Medina Muhammad's mom was in from Chicago tonight. And um, I looked over one time. She was cheering as hard as uh, – she was sitting with Tori's mom, but was cheering hard as Tori's mom was for Tori. And and that's 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 warming. And you know, obviously, when your players from out of out of state, when their families are able to come and watch them play, that's real special. And so, but just real proud of our basketball team. We got a long way to go. We're not close to being where we got to be yet, but we're going to get there. We're going to get there. It was great tonight that we got going. And Cedric had to play 40 minutes on Saturday. Um, we got a big game on Wednesday against Tulane. They're a good basketball team. They've got to win over LSU. They've got to win over Virginia. They're a top 40 RPI team. It's a big game for us for postseason situations. We've let a couple RPI games slip out of our hands. We got one here at home that we got to take care of business on Wednesday. And so we, we'll, we'll go back in and get ready for that tomorrow and start focusing on that. But tonight we're going to enjoy this. Tori's going to enjoy this game. I want her to go home and watch every second of it. I want her to go home and her mama and her, her brother and her sister and let her brother do some magic tricks or whatever he wants to do to keep this going. And I want you all to watch every one of those threes you made and just really, really enjoy this because tomorrow when we go back to work, we won't worry about it anymore. But tonight I really want her to enjoy it. I want her teammates. The thing that was even um, satisfying, Sandrika says some – gets in some foul trouble, and she's our leading scorer, and she's kind of our go-to player. And um, I think she's one of the top four or five players in this league, and I think a lot of other people in our league are seeing that. There's not one person on that bench that was cheering harder for Tori than her. There was not one person that was more excited about her scoring it than Sandrika. And that's that's what you really want from your kind of your go-to player. You want to see that, that they – look, I, I got my – I'm averaging 20 points a game. I'm leading the SEC in scoring. I only got 11. I'm not worried about that. Let's get Tori another one. She was in the huddle telling them, hey, let's get Tori another three because if she makes two more, she can break a national record. That's your leading scorer saying that. That says a lot about our chemistry and where we're going. And I will, I'll end with this and say that we are going to be really, really good – over the next two years. We'll have a chance to win this league over the next two years. But this team wants to do something this year. Obviously, we saw what y'all did on offense, but 19 steals, 22 turnovers, 37 points. Would you call this one of your best complete games in 10? Yeah, we're, we're getting there defensively. I think we've had like six games in a row where we've held people under 60 points, where the first five, four or five games, the four games where we was letting the people score 90. We're getting there. Um, we still have some letdowns from time to time. Um, you know, my goal – we, got, we gave up 56 points at Southern Miss. Somebody said you'd play good defense. I didn't think we did. I thought we probably should have gave up about 36. I didn't think we was in tune a lot, and we just made some plays out of, out of athleticism. Tonight, we gave up 59, and, and tonight's hard. When you get up 40, 50, 60 points, whatever it is, you, you, you have some tendency to start playing the clock. You have some tendency to start looking at the scoreboard. That's natural, and so that's why I was coaching. It was that last – Six minutes of the game was probably the most important six minutes of those five players 
um, season because that was valuable minutes for John L. Williams. That was valuable minutes for C.C. Mahate, valuable minutes for Kiki Kira Golding, valuable minutes for Tori Lewis and Medina Muhammad and Alyssa Austin. Um, I, I saw me late in the game talking to Alyssa Austin there. You are a point guard. I hollered at another gym, everybody in the gym. You are the point guard. Point guards, I don't care what the score is. Don't rely on somebody else. You go get the ball because if it's a one-point game against South Carolina, you have to go get it. But you got to train yourself to do that now. And so that's what I was talking to her about there late in the game is be the point guard no matter what the score is. Run this basketball team no matter what the score is. Because there could be a game that we're in a one-point game against South Carolina or against Kentucky or something like that, and Queen Hayes is fouled out. You have to run the team. So run it now so you're ready to do it then. And so, you know, that was that was a huge last five or six minutes. I'm just real proud of them. Um, we could have went anyway. I'm telling you, son, it was a rough bus ride back. There was not a lot of talking besides me. And 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 I, I told him that you, this stuff this has to mean something to you. It's got to burn you. And I know we're young, and I know sometimes you can say, okay, well we'll figure it out the next game. No, every game counts, and you got to treat it that way. And we will. We're we're getting there. We're getting there. I'm just real proud of him. How key, how key is the six game stretch getting to be at home leading up to January? Like, that where you're it's it's huge. It's huge. And you know, we feel like that we should be eight and one. We do, or nine and one, whatever it is now. That nine and one. I think we, there's one game that I felt like that we 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 got beat in. But I feel like that the other three of our losses we we cost ourselves, and felt like we retipped those games that we win those games. But that's that's one not one way or another. I mean, you can't worry about that. And so we we don't feel like we're a six and four basketball team. We feel like we're a nine and one basketball team now. Or we but so. As we get back here, this is a key stretch. You got Tulane on Wednesday. They're good, man. They're a really good basketball team. And they're going to come in here ready to play. We got to be ready to go. McNeese State will, will probably win the Southland Conference. That's a good league. It's a really, really good league. And they've won that thing a couple of times over the last couple of years. And um, they're going to come in here and they got some great athletes. That'll be tough. And then you, after Christmas, you got Alabama AM. But we had last year after Christmas, had Southeastern Louisiana had to go to overtime and win the game. So even though you look at Alabama and m you think, okay, oh, they should be okay against them. No. Every game counts, especially when you're youth, when you have youth. And that leads you into a Vanderbilt. The first six games of the SEC is crucial for our basketball team. Can we go five and one? Can we go six and zero? Oh? Can we go four and two? Will we go three and three? Will we go one and five? Will we go on six? Those are crucial games. If you can go four and two at least, if if not five and one or six and zero, oh, you have a chance now to make a big run. And we've got to prepare ourselves to get ready for January third. January third against Vanderbilt, it's all hands on deck, just like it was against Arkansas last year. That's what got us going in SEC play. We had the same like type struggles last year, but in pre-conference. But we went out against Arkansas right away and competed and won a big game. And then we come back and about beat Kentucky at Kentucky. Then went to Florida and won. Then come back home and beat an Alabama and beat a Georgia. Those were that got us going. We got to get ready to do that again this year. And these games and every minute of these games is important to get us there. Thank you. Thank you, guys.